All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. It's 602. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And then as others join us, I'll let them into the Zoom call. Thank you so much for joining us today for our second session of our Zoom through admission series. This is Cecina leading the way. So we're going to start like we do every single day here at Cecina, and that is through prayer. So if you would like to join me in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, please bless us today as we gather to carefully listen, plan, and live out this next school year. And as we prepare for the next few months, we pray for health. Please keep us healthy. We pray for guidance. Please guide our conversations. We pray for peace. Please instill us with peace. We pray for hope. Please keep our hearts hopeful. And Lord, in a time when it is so difficult to find the words, let us instead find you. And as we look to the near future, hopeful together in safe community, let us both prioritize safety and keep close to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So here is our agenda for today. We're briefly going to go over our Zoom series. Um, our presenters are going to do some introductions and we'll go right into our content of how Cecina is leading the way, how we are here to promote your growth and success. Then we'll go into our Q&A sessions and then we'll just share some reminders with all of you. So soon through ad admissions, we're in our second session of, of this series. Um, our next sessions are learning differences, which is for any parent who has a student who currently has a 504 plan, an IEP, or a CSEP, and you want to learn more about the ways that Cecina is here to support those students. Then in October 22nd, we have English language learners, which will be for those students who are considered English language learners so that you can learn how we help you and support you here. Then October 29th, we're gonna talk about college careers and beyond. And then in November, we'll have We Are Crusaders, which is going to be entirely focused on student life here at Cecina. And that is going to be a panel of both our clubs and athletic moderators and students. Then November 19th, we'll talk about how affording your Cecina education is possible. And finally, December 3rd, we'll talk about, well, now you've been accepted to Cecina, what do you do next? So that is the lineup. You can register at cecina.org slash admissions. Um, all of the links are there for you to register for all of them or as many as you feel your family would benefit from. So next, I would like to introduce our two presenters, Mr. David Delaca and Mr. Joe Thurber. David. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, it's really my pleasure to serve um, as interim principal here at Cecina, and um, we're just ever so blessed to have you join us tonight. Um, I look forward to speaking with you here a little bit later in the program. And uh, at this point, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Joe Thurber, our president. Thank you, David. Hi, everybody. Welcome. And as Miriam and David have said, welcome to everybody. Thank you very, very much for joining us tonight. Um, I want to start out by, again, thanking you and thanking Miriam, our host, and Ellen, our co-host. And thanks to David DeLaca for co-presenting with me. A um, little background biographically about me by way of introduction. This is my 13th year as president of Cecina, and very, very privileged and honored to serve in this role. Prior to that, this ministry, I've been a high school classroom teacher, a high school football, baseball, and basketball coach, a high school athletic director, all here at Cecina, executive director of stewardship and development for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. My undergraduate and graduate degrees are from the University of Notre Dame. My wife, Angie, and I are members of Our Lady of Lourdes Parish. We have five children, and they're all very proud alumni of Our Lady of Lourdes School and Cecina. So uh, again, welcome, and thank you very much for joining us. So what we'll do now is I think move into the, are some reflections on how Cecina truly makes a difference. And again, as we've said, thank you for joining us. We also, you know, we do wanna share with you tonight about Cecina, entertain your questions. We also wanna wish you and your children the very best for your eighth grade year. So it's just one of those highlights of your life. 
and uh, it'll go by, it probably is going by like the blink of an eye, and we just hope you have a, an, a, an excellent eighth grade year um, before you get to high school. We'll share a little bit about why we're called Cecina. You know, it's on the background behind me, it's on the school crest behind David, it's on the dress code shirts that hopefully your, your students and children will wear when they're here at Cecina as students. But what, 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 what does that name Cecina mean? Where did it come from? So here we have a couple pictures of Father Thomas Cecina, also a person that we refer to as Father Tom. And you may already be somewhat or very familiar with this story, but I'll share just a few tidbits with you because really our, in addition to providing an excellent education yeah, academically and excellent student life opportunities, our mission is to further the spirit of service and sacrifice that he lived by. He was a Catholic priest uh, who again, lived a life of service and sacrifice uh, especially as an army chaplain in the United States Army during World War II. He served in the Pacific Theater and developed a reputation while there for being a very friendly and generous spirited priest who really considered himself uh, a servant of others. Unfortunately, he was captured as a prisoner of war. And many of us have heard of the Bataan Death March, the infamous Bataan Death March during World War II. Well, unfortunately, but in a way, fortunately for us, because of his example, Father Tom uh, was a prisoner on that march. And um, after that, he voluntarily uh, joined a prisoner of war ship that carried about almost 2,000 prisoners, closer to 1,800 um, at sea. And on the, one of their journeys uh, to a forced labor camp, the ship was attacked. And after, during about a three hour period, that ship sank and all but about six people on board so almost every one of 1,800 prisoners died during the course of about three hours uh, in the Pacific Theater. There were about a half a dozen people, however, who did survive. While Father Tom was not one of them, those about a half dozen eyewitness survivors told, uh, gave firsthand accounts later of this very courageous, kind, and devoted Catholic priest who during the last hours of his life did not try to flee for safety, did not retreat into himself, but instead made himself available for others very unselfishly, very courageously, um, in a very service-oriented way to others who needed him during their dying hours. And so when the Archdiocese of Indianapolis in the late 1940s and early 1950s decided to construct this high school as the first Archdiocesan high school in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, they were looking for a name and they thought about what person lived the life that we want our graduates to emulate, to imitate. And they came up with Father Thomas Cecina. So our ministry today is in many ways to foster the same spirit of service and sacrifice that he lived by during his lifetime. Which takes us to our mission statement. And uh, Marion will put it up here on the screen for us. I'll just read it very briefly. This is our school mission statement. Cecina Memorial High School, established by the Archbishop of Indianapolis, is a co-educational Catholic college and life preparatory school that motivates our diverse and gifted community of students to attain educational excellence, be lifelong learners, and live as servant leaders in the inspiring footsteps of Father Thomas Cecina. In a nutshell, that's what we are about. That's what we strive to do every day. And here are a few reflections on that mission statement that are accurate descriptions of who we are and what we do today. Um, diversity, our diverse and gifted community of students. We have a lot of diversity here at Cecina. It's a very, very real world experience for your children. Um, our diversity takes the form of racial and ethnic diversity socioeconomic diversity, religious diversity, and diversity of educational backgrounds. I'll share a few data points with you about that. Our student body is this year is 45% Caucasian, 35% Latino, 15% African American, and 5% Asian or other. So hopefully just from those numbers, you can see that your children will be exposed to peers of many different walks of life. Uh, the socioeconomic diversity of our student body is significant. 
again, the religious diversity and by educational background. What I mean there is that most of our students, about 70%, attended one of the East Deanery Catholic schools before coming to Sassina. Holy Cross, St. Philip, Little Flower, Our Lady of Lords, Holy Spirit, St. Michael's in Greenfield. However, the other 30% come from about, well, from more than 50, 50 different sending schools. So um, our student body hails from all over the city and from a variety of backgrounds. One of our distinguishing assets is personalization. Our student body is large enough that we can offer a number of programs that David's going to describe, and it's small enough that every student is known by many other people on campus, both other students, faculty members, administrators, and counselors, and others. And we've built our education on three premises, spirit, mind, and body. And we'll share some of those examples with you tonight. We are committed to every single student's journey through life and every single student's success. If you look on our webpage, on the homepage, sasina.org, near the bottom, we have a scrolling list of all the colleges and universities that our graduates have been accepted to in about the last five years. It's a very, very impressive list of colleges and universities. Most of our graduates go to a two or a four year college upon graduation. And again, the finest schools across the country. 8% either enter the workforce directly after high school or enter military service. And when we say we're committed to every student's success, one of the things we mean by that is whether you're bound for college after Cecina or the military service or the workforce, everybody, every student and every family is equally important to us. That is our mission. We are college preparatory. We are life preparatory. Every student's journey and life pathway and destination beyond Cecina is equally important to us. And in that vein, one of our beliefs because we know it's true, is that you can go anywhere from here. When we take a look at the trajectories and the career accomplishments, life accomplishments of our graduates, we see it in business, we see it in law, medicine, healthcare, science, engineering, ministry, education, raising families. People do wonderful things in society and in the church while they're at Cecina and after they graduate from Cecina. You can go anywhere from here. And a big reason for that is the Catholic foundations of our education, which will be the foundations for your, during high school, for your child's holistic development and engagement in service in the community. How do we do that? Well, there are many ways. Some of them are through our campus ministry program that includes weekly masses, service projects for every student that incorporate Catholic social teaching and retreats for every student. In addition to those formal, if you will, programmatic opportunities, we have expectations for our students to be responsible, respectful, values-based citizens of a Catholic school community. And we want as many students and families to obtain the benefit of that as possible. And so we do everything we can to make our education affordable for you, 99%, that's a true statement, not, not an approximation, of Cecina students receive some form of financial aid. Many students receive multiple forms. We do and will continue to do everything we can to be affordable for you. We're an anchor and an asset for the East Side, for the city, for the Catholic Church, for the United States of America for the world. We've been here for 70 years. We've stood the test of time and we're doing things to prepare to be here for another 70 years. Our alumni live in 48 states and five continents and are engaged very successfully in the types of careers and life paths that I've just described. In addition to being in the technical trades, which are extremely valuable and important and military service, just as our namesake, Father Thomas Cecina was. We're also a really, um, from my perspective, a really inspiring blend uh, of school community that has multi-generational families. 
In other words, a number of our students are children, if not grandchildren, and once in a while, a great grandchild of a Cecina graduate, while at the same time, we actively seek and welcome families who are new to Cecina for the very first time. So it's a very nice, integrated, welcoming community from both those perspectives. We have a major project going on. It's called a capital campaign. And in particular, the name of this campaign or the theme of it is Our Faith, Our Journey, Our Time. Its purpose is to strengthen our current programs and our presence for another 70 or more years. And as you see on the slide here, we have six campaign priorities, six uh, projects that we have embarked on that include a chapel inside the school building, main entrance renovations to help with accessibility and traffic flow and curb appeal, new athletic and activity fields, a new weight room. Uh, we relocated it inside the school building for our student safety. And then two funds, one for academic excellence and another for our facilities. So that's our case statement, if you will. And we're doing really well. We're approaching our goal. And in fact, we think we might even go over it. Financially, our minimum goal is $6 million and we're at 5.8. And 3.8 million, so almost 4 million has been paid. So we have a good amount of money to do these projects. Not every, we don't have everything yet, but we, a significant amount. And we're in the final 100 day push between now and New Year's Eve to reach that 6 million, if not go above it, as our visionary goal would have us try to do. On the next slide, you see a picture of our first completed project, the weight room. It serves physical education classes and every athletic team that we have. Um, we're also putting in this year $400,000 into our academic and facilities funds. And we're making, uh, finishing, I should say, our design and construction timetables for the remaining projects. So trying to share here in a nutshell, uh, some ways in which Cecina truly makes a difference. And one of the main takeaways I would just ask you to consider is, you can go anywhere from here and we have a diverse student body, uh, including diversity of learning styles, and every child is equally important to us. So thank you again, and I'm gonna invite David to share some more detail about uh, many of our programs. David? Thank you very much, Joe. I really appreciate, uh, again, everyone's uh, time with us this evening. And one of the key things that, um, differentiates and, and is a benefit of Cecina is our personal approach to all that we do with your family and with your child children when they come here to Cecina. Um, our value proposition that we developed over the summer, one of the key tenets of that was personalization and that commitment to all students journey and success can be found in multiple examples across the school, whether it be from our uh, way in which we uh, approach class sizes or the way in which we um, attain or um, address students counseling needs, um, the way that we personalize students course uh, requests, a wide, wide range and variety of ways in which we, we do that. So I'd like to talk to you now a little bit about um, specifically our college prep environment and the way in which we can personalize that for your child. Specifically here at Cecina, we structure the school day and the school environment in a way that prepares your child for what he or she would see in a college environment. How does that happen or, or what form does that take? Uh, when we think about the day schedule, we use what's called a block schedule here at school. Your student would be um, taking eight classes across the, the uh, school year, and four of those classes would occur on one day of the week, and four of those classes would happen on another day of the week. And so in this block scheduling, we have extended class time in which students can participate not only in traditional learning, but then also in a wide range of experimental lab environments, or in um, activities, group projects, and a wide range of other mechanisms and a multimedia um, environment that allows students to grow and learn together. Our class sizes are ones in which we carefully um, plan for 
and we don't overpopulate rooms and classes um, so that teachers have the ability to be um, direct with students in terms of the teaching and learning that is going on inside of the classrooms. Our breadth and depth of classes and curriculum allow for us to offer 38 AP dual credit and honors classes. These classes are focused on high academic rigor environments that also then prepare students for a college environment. Oftentimes these are um, earning students college credit or an opportunity to advance beyond what they are um, um, doing here at school. So they're earning both the core 40 requirement component of college or of graduation, but then also preparing themselves and earning college credit um, as they advance beyond high school. Our learning differences uh, program and our program to support our English language learners is another component in a way that we both personalize as well as prepare students for a college environment. Our online learning platforms are structured in a way so that our technology use here at school mimics a lot of what colleges and universities are doing today. And so students over the course of their regular coursework are learning the trade, so to speak, of, of how college classes operate, how material is presented, and then providing students those study skills and organization skills so that they can be successful beyond high school. All of this then truly leads to a high college and university acceptance. We see a wide range of um, impact on our efforts to um, introduce students to not only a college process, but then the way in which they move into the application process. We see, as uh, Joe mentioned earlier, a wide range of colleges and universities that our students are uh, readily accepted into. Moving on into um, an additional topic, we want to know, we want you to know that we are dedicated to your students' growth and success. So not only are we creating a foundational environment and from a college preparatory, but we also want to do things that helps your student to grow, that helps your child to expand his or her wings, so to speak. And a lot of that can happen through our counseling services. Of course, we're concerned about academic success and we will do all that we um, can do to ensure that your student is ready for um, classes, are selecting things that provide interest to him or her while um, attaining that um, core requirement of graduation. We also will provide students with national assessments as well as local assessments to track student growth um, and prepare them for things like the ACT and uh, ACT after um, as they look towards colleges um, and uh, other aspects of their potential future um, beyond school here at Cecina. In our college planning environment, we focus on not only looking at what grades a student is maybe um, realizing inside of the grade book, but then also where are their skills and their interests um, impacting their journey and how is that impacting the process through which they may want to um, look towards gaining a foothold in, in the world. Um, an example might be a student taking a survey of their interests and then the, that interest survey being developed into looking at our course catalog and identifying what elective classes that student might want to take. And then another part of that interest survey might direct that student to uh, want to um, entertain a wide range of universities and colleges that would continue to support programs that, that show that student's interest. And so it's a multi-step, multi-year process that we walk with your student, walk with your child, so that you have the opportunity to collectively dialogue over the course of the four years here at Cecina. And then as your child graduates from Cecina, there is a um, assuredness about what that future can hold. We have a dedicated online academic advisor 
uh, currently this year for our students that are learning online. And so uh, we have invested in and, and dedicated a person directly towards those students that are learning online so that um, we have those kinds of um, supports available for students that have chose to learn online this year. We offer social emotional support to students through our social worker that is here at school. Of course, in our spirit, mind, and body uh, focus of the whole child, um, social emotional is an incredibly important component um, of a student's well being. And so we have dedicated supports to provide that um, here at school. If you're child is involved in the 21st Century Scholars Program. We have a dedicated advisor to that 21st Century Scholars Program to help him or her stay on track throughout their whole high school career and realize the benefits then of what that program brings. While investing in our programs, investing in our faculty and our teachers, um, is critically important as well. And so by investing in those people, what we bring to the table, what we, our benefit here at Cecina, is the quality teaching staff that we offer. Our, teachings, our, our teachers have a wide range of um, both professional experience, as well as some having worked out in the field and in other areas, and um, bring that into the classroom and offer not only professional expertise, but a true deep and um, caring, compassion, Catholic and Christian identity to each classroom. Our technology capabilities supports all of these things. Um, starting about six or seven years ago, we began a major infrastructure rebuild here at school and that's resulted in a one-to-one -one program that allows all students to receive a laptop to use over the course of their school year. Um, we have both the hardware, software, uh, infrastructure to support teaching and learning in a wide range of dynamic ways. And we of course have provided the professional development to our teaching staff so that they feel qualified and ready to be using these technology tools with our students. Student life here at Cecina has um, so many aspects to it. As deep and broad as our curriculum offerings and our course catalog, so is the ways in which your, your student would be able to participate in clubs, activities, and athletics and a faith life beyond the classroom. Campus ministry here at Cecina offers a wide range of service opportunities, of um, activities and ways to be involved in the faith life beyond the Catholic theology classroom. And so campus ministry um, gives students an opportunity to continue to explore their own faith, to be supported in the um, ways in which they want to do that, and is a critical component of what we do here. Joe mentioned earlier a um, weekly mass schedule, and that's a, a small portion of what our campus ministry program does in addition to supporting our service program, as well as um, other activities that are focused on building faith and being a participant in um, social justice activities. Our athletics program here at Cecina is statewide known. We um, tout many championships and um, are so proud of the athletics and the successes of our student athletes. So many of our students uh, participate in um, athletics here across um, the board here at Cecina. And the students that are shown here in the picture on the slide is our current girls soccer team that have just been dominating the field this season. And um, with only a couple of games yet to go that will determine a, a significant status, we are rooting them on and looking forward to their ongoing and continuing successes. In terms of our clubs and activities, our, um, the, these, these range from boys volleyball to book club to 
robotics to a theater program and performances that includes a fall play and a spring musical, um, archery. So really and truly, not only can you um, come here and get a great education as a student, but you can expand your horizons, offer yourself the opportunity to explore and try a wide range of different things through faith, sports, and clubs and activities. And at this time, we are going to be moving into our question and answer session, and I'll be turning over the presentation to Miriam. So if you would like to submit a question, feel free to do so on the chat, or if you feel comfortable turning on your mic and just asking the question, you're more than welcome. Whichever you're most comfortable with, and Ms. Walsh is um, moderating the chat, so she'll ask your questions out loud so that everyone can hear them um, if you are doing it through the chat. So we have one question from a parent um, and well, it's a, two questions. Um, the first is how would you describe your school community and how does it feel? Um, I think that President Thurber um, can answer these questions very well. I appreciate the question. Thank you for asking it. Um, some adjectives or, or, or feel words that, that I, I believe I, I know are true. Um, relative to our community, welcoming, inclusive, respectful, um, interested in people of different backgrounds from my own. So those uh, faith oriented uh, and respectful of, of, of different faiths that our students and, and teachers come to Cecina with. Um, Trusting is another word that comes to mind. Um, so I, 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 th those are ad descriptors of our community from my perspective. Thanks. Um, we have another question from a parent. Um, and Mr. Thurber, I think you can, you can do this one too. Um, it says, you mentioned small class size. What is the average graduating class size here at Cecina? Well, if we, again, excellent question. Thank you for asking it. <clears throat> if we looked at it over, you know, several, several decades, um, you know, going back to the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and so forth, we'd have one answer. In the last 10 years, our answer would be 95 to 110 would be a good range for an average graduating class size. We opened this school year with 415 students so basically 100 to 105 students per class on average uh, to start this school year. And our freshman class was the largest at uh, about 115 to start this school year. Mr. Delaca, you've been at Cecina um, many, many years as well. How would you describe the Cecina community? 
I think that one of the one of the words that comes to mind is is uh, family. Um, I feel like that when a student and family enters our school, enrolls into our school, they get an instant membership card to our, our widening family. The Cecina community is one that is strong of faith, that is um, one that is protective of its own, that is um, concerned and, and deeply rooted in the success of everyone. And then we have one other question. Um, and David, I think this may be for you. I understand you offer assistance for those students that may need additional tutoring. If they are an athlete, do you provide group settings for tutoring? Yeah, so the uh, great question. The uh, short answer to that is yes. Um, we have a wide range of options. Not only do our individual teachers offer um, dedicated st study and, and tutoring hours uh, throughout the week, but then we also, many of our sports, either collectively um, as a team or uh, through other independent means, provide um, opportunities for students to study together after school. So um, tutoring and additional assistance is is definitely something that we offer here regularly at school. Thank you. This is another question. Um, Mr. Delaca, perhaps this is also for you. Do you feel like students with IEPs get lost in the program? Um, great question. I know that um, what I can share with you is one of complete trust and um, belief and dedication of our work for students with IEPs. Um, we have a director of learning differences who um, also works alongside with our instructional assistant who um, dedicate their time and energy to the support of students with IEPs. Um, all of our teachers are significantly aware of IEP needs and support um, those needs, whether it be extended um, time on tests or um, other needs that might come up across a student's IEP, um, but we have both the um, staffing, the energy, the willingness, uh, and the desire to ensure that we support students um, with those um, learning, um, with those learning needs. Uh, one thing else that I will share with you on that topic is that we have a dedicated period that a student uses per day if uh, the family chooses that is called a skills class. And that skills class is a, an elective class that students with IEPs can take so that there's some dedicated time to assist those students with um, organization, um, skill development, um, additional time for um, review of existing assignments and other classes. So it's a real uh, helping aid to those students with IEPs and um, provides a, a dedicated link to the rest of um, the students' classes. Thank you. You are most welcome. Um, we have a um, um, well. I just had a parent who who said that we um, that she's very thankful for um, this evening and um, that it was very informative. So thank you very much. Great to hear. We have a couple more minutes, uh, so if you guys have any additional questions, feel free to turn them in. If you have maybe a question that you may want to ask uh, 
at the end. Uh, we will be staying on after we close out in case that any of you have, have a question that maybe you don't want to share with, with the entire group, but we will be staying on in case someone has an additional question. But we still can probably do another, another question or two if any of you have one. Okay, so we will move forward to our closing. Um, want to remind you that we are hosting school tours. We have them scheduled every Wednesday at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., or 5 p.m., but if these dates and times don't work for you, please let us know because we do host tours up on request at whatever day and time is needed for you. Uh, so please let us know if you want to come on a school tour, we would love to have you. Um, and we make sure that it's personalized to you. You know, the teachers that you may wanna meet, the certain programs you may wanna hear more about. We just ask that you wear a mask during the entire visit. Also, uh, our applications are opened. They open at the beginning of September. So we are accepting applications at the moment and our early admissions deadline is November 5th. So if you apply by November 5th, we will get an admissions decision to you by the week of Thanksgiving. But of course we will be accepting applications past that time. And then a reminder that we still have some Zoom sessions coming up in the month of October, including learning differences. English language learners, and then college careers and beyond. I see that we have some questions. Uh, do you schedule a tour online? Yes, if you go to sustina.org slash visit, you can register for your tour online, but you can also give us a call to Ms. Walsh or I or send us an email and we're more than happy to speak with you and schedule one over the phone. Um, and then we have another question. Joe, do you have college coaches from D1 schools visit the school for recruiting? They, um, so that's a question. Yeah, yes, excellent question. Short answer is yes. Um, if there's a more detailed angle on that that you'd like to kind of probe or talk about, we can sure do that. But yes, we certainly do. Um, typically, it happens most often when um, there's a, a prospect that when there's a student athlete in one of our programs who a division one coach or coaching staff sees as a prospect to uh, participate at that level. And when that's the case, then yes, we do. Um, most recent example that I can think of would be in football uh, last year when we had coaches from Indiana University, Iowa University, and a couple others who were at practices and or games because of a certain member of our team but we have had, had that happen in additional sports as well. Thank you. Um, uh, we had another question, is the application available online? Yes, it is. So if you go to our homepage, cecina.org, at the top right of the website, there's a yellow button that says apply. You will click there and it'll actually take you to another web page called School Admin, and School Admin is just the platform that we use to house our applications. So you would go there and you would create an account. You just enter your email, your name, and you create a password. And then that way you can monitor the progress of your student's application. And then once the student has been accepted, that's also where you complete the enrollment. And every year thereafter, that's the same system that we use for re-enrollment every year. So yes, it is online. Perfect. Well, it is 646. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. We really appreciate you. We hope that all of your children become Cecina Crusaders next year, and we look forward to continue to work with you through the admissions and enrollment process this year. Thank you so much, and feel free to stay on if you have additional questions. Thank you.